Jersey Central at 732-545-9282. Toll free at 888-545-9282. Watch Jersey Central live online at WCTCAM.com or listen on your smartphone with the iHeartRadio or TuneIn apps. Connect with WCTC on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube by searching 1450 WCTC. And now back to Jersey's Morning Show, Jersey Central with Burt Barrett. We're the Forge Jewelers. Omega time is 838. Forge Jewelers, the official jur- official jeweler, rather, of 1450 WCTC. It's good to have you here. We'll do our need-to-know things coming up in just a little bit. I got a special guest who is with me on the Jersey Central Newsmaker Hotline, uh, author of a terrific, terrific book. It's a memoir of youth, baseball, and chronic illness, and where all three come together to make a remarkable, remarkable true life story. My guest uh, this morning is author Emil DeAndris. Uh, he's joining me all the way uh, from the West Coast uh, this morning. Emil, good morning. Uh, signing last night in Portland, Oregon, and up nice and early for us this morning here on the East Coast. I really appreciate it. How you doing today? I'm doing great, Bert. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Uh, share your story, if you would, Emil. Uh, talk about uh, your uh, prowess on the field and your incredible gift that you have and and how it all just kind of went away. You want to uh, share your story with us? Yeah, of course. Um, the book kind of begins and uh, it takes me through my high school days, like early 2004 in San Francisco, um, where I enjoyed, you know, some measurable success as a pitcher, as a left-handed pitcher. Um, took me to a scholarship to the University of Hawaii where I pitched for four years um, and had a professional contract. And, you know, in the same month that I got this professional contract it was to go pitch out in Europe in a league in uh, Belgium, I also started to experience some swelling in my in my elbow, and that swelling spread throughout my body. And before I was ever able to really throw my first professional pitch, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And so the book is a narrative of, of how a, a young kid loved the game of baseball, uh, grew up playing the game of baseball, and always thought, you know, he would. Uh, and suddenly, you know, his body sort of shut down on him when he needed the most. And it's just about sort of having to let the game go and finding out how to, you know, love it in different ways. Wow. What what was your initial uh, reaction, Emil, the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis? Did you say, wait a minute, this is just for old people. I- I'm too young to have rheumatoid arthritis. Did you? Was there some maybe some degree of denial when you first heard what it was? Yeah, 100. percent You know, I totally, I totally ignored. Uh, the the diagnosis I, I and I refused to take the medication as well because I thought if I take the medication that they prescribe me that means that I'm accepting that I have this disease and so I um I didn't and that sort of that kind of allowed the disease to spread a little bit more rapidly than it otherwise would have and so the disease took a it, it was pretty sinister uh, initially and so it, it came to a point where my disease I mean my body had shut down so much that I had no choice but to sort of accept that this was a real this is a real thing. My my life was about to change. Wow. Uh, I, I could see you perhaps maybe at some point maybe grappling with something along the lines of depression to realize here was a game that you loved uh, since you were a young boy and you obviously were very good at it. And, you know, left-handed pitchers, you can be pretty good and still go on to have a, a great professional career just because of the hand that you happen to throw the ball with. And uh, this had to really just kind of throw you for a loop and, and maybe set you back a little ways, uh, I'm guessing. Did that happen too? Yeah, you know, well, it's, even when you play baseball your whole life, you're used to spending like a bunch of hours out of the day on the baseball field or in the weight room or, you know, pitching or throwing long toss or bullpens or what have you. And so suddenly uh, I I had all this time in the day uh, open and it was, you know, I was in pain during this time. So that was kind of, I, it was a morose sort of, um, sort of time. And so I realized there's something I needed. I needed to find something to do that would take up the hours of the day that I was used to spending pitching. And like you said, like a left-handed pitcher, um, I pitching for me was a pretty cerebral activity just because I, I never threw that hard. So pitching was kind of like a mind game. And so I needed to find something that psychologically challenged me the way pitching did. And I found that writing w- was that substitute. A typical left-hander, you know, analyzing everything, you know, picking your spots just so and, you know, being frustrated if the ball doesn't exactly go where you want it to go. It seems like that's a, a trait that left-handed pitchers seem like they all have. And uh, the title of the book, let me give you that too, it is called Hard to Grip. And my guest is the author, Emil DeAndres, uh, here this morning on WCTC, uh, a fantastic read. 
uh, that day, that moment when you said, you know what, I'll, I'll never put on a baseball uniform and pitch in this beautiful game again, Emil. What was that moment like for you? Uh, you know, actually, there's a section of the book that it's very distinct when that happens, and I actually read from that last night uh, at my signing in Portland. But, um, you know, it's, it's a little surreal. I, the way I describe it, uh, the way it was for me, it was like uh, I was in a – I was in the seats of a minor league baseball stadium where my best friend, I, I was watching my best friend play for the, uh, the, the Palm beach Cardinals at the time. Um, and there's a whole bunch of, there's a whole series of events that led to me sitting there watching that game that were unexpected and sort of spontaneous. And it, it kind of was like a spiritual moment because I, I had no idea that I was actually going to see him playing that day. Um, and so I was just sitting there in the stands watching him warm up and I realized I was sitting there as a fan eating a hot dog and he was down there actually playing. And that was kind of when I knew that I baseball is always going to be in my life. It's just now I'm going to have to be a fan and I'm going to have to get, I'm going to have to get used to that. And I kind of chuckled to myself and uh, sort of understood. It kind of felt like people had been laughing at a joke and the joke had been on you for a long time. And you're just sort of coming, coming to understand that right now. That's wow. kind of how I described it. Wow. What a moment that had to be for you. Uh, so uh, talk about, let's talk about uh, the U of today uh, and you're focusing uh, your passion and your energy and your drive uh, to excel in the baseball field. Like you had for such a long time uh, to help you move on from baseball. What's your passion now and, and what are you focusing on and what's your life work now? You know, I, I, I'm a, uh... I wear a couple of different hats, but I definitely, I coach baseball now and I coach at the high school where I, I once played. And so, um, now it's, it was something that I, I was very apprehensive uh, about initially because I didn't want to be really near a baseball field that I couldn't play on myself. And so it took some, a, a bit of evolution in my personality, but now it's one of my favorite parts of the day. I like, well, I like looking at all these kids as my younger brothers, kind of, I'm just at the age where, I can mess around with them and joke with them, but still have something to offer them that's, you know, can be confused as wisdom, I guess. And uh, so I, I coach them, and uh, I'm a professor of English uh, down at a community college about 20 minutes south of San Francisco. And um, so I like to help kids sort of refine the craft of writing. And, um, and I write. I write a lot. I write as much as I can whenever I have free time. Gotcha. Do you, do you still follow baseball and still go to games? And you'll always be a fan of the game, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think this disease and being away from the game as a player and re being reintroduced to the game as a coach has kind of given me like a complexity of love for the game that I never really had as a player. As a player, I just it seemed. I mean, the game was was very real and and um, and vibrant and fun, but it was it was a little bit more one dimensional, I think. And now I think. Having been away from it for a while, I, I have a, like a more of a romantic love for it, and it's a, I have I have experienced nostalgia. It's like being around the game gives me more of like a field of dreams vibe than it does just like a you know a competitive drive um, sort of experience. So, yeah, I, I I love the game now more probably than I ever did as a player. Wow, interesting. So you did a signing in Oregon last night, uh, Hawaii. Is that the correct? Where you're off to next to do a couple readings and signings uh, out in Hawaii? Yeah, later later this month I'm gonna go out to Hawaii um, and have a signing at the university where I where I went and uh, at a local bookstore as well. That's awesome. Uh, the book again, hard to grip. Uh, how does someone uh, get their hands on a copy of this, Emil? Um, it's at bookstores uh, in the sports section. I've, I've I've found mostly, but Amazon is probably the easiest bet. Okay, real good. Emil DeAndris, uh, author of the book Hard to Grip, uh, an incredible true life story, and uh, you moved on beyond this game, and uh, the next chapters of your life are, of course, are still to be written. But, man, thank you so much uh, for the time this morning. Uh, the time difference, I know, is, is kind of challenging, but great to have you on the show, Emil, and uh, good luck going forward, continued success. And if you bring this book to the East Coast and do some events, you make sure you let us know, okay? Thanks a lot, Bert. All right, thanks a lot. Have a good day. All right, Emil DeAndris, author of the book Hard to Grip, and uh, get your hands on it. Quite a story.